<laughs> oh my. Just as I look up here, look at this. I think we, oh no, I thought it was a U, but I think it's actually a fir. It was just the way it was growing. Uh -huh. But this oh, fir tree. Hatsquail, Eich Tanoya, Toitstanat Quien Quin Shaman, Sis Quien Sna. Welcome, Anwanoxton Squalowin. So, welcome to this beautiful peninsula with village sites that we uh, are still connected to the Skomish Ochemea. We're connected to Akachoch, which is where Beaver Lake is. Papayak, which means elbow, which is over by Brockton Point, and uh, Huai Huai, which is facing the North Shore Mountains over by uh, on the north side of the aquarium, and Chaithus, which is throughout this whole peninsula. So this, uh, today we're looking at the awakening of spring and the beautiful sunshine that is coming and bringing all the little buds to life and bringing out the pollinators and beautiful, beautiful creatures throughout the island. And uh, we're gonna be talking about what it means to be in the height of spring with flowers blooming, leaves opening up, birds chirping. We live in the, pla the land of planes, trains and automobiles, so all of those industrial and modern sounds mixed with the natural sounds of this forest. And I'm gonna take our wonderful Margot Kane on a journey through this place to talk about what these medicines are, the plants, the interconnectedness of the forest. And this place exists in a larger entity known as Kom Komalai, which means large grove of beautiful maples. So we will be seeing maples and hi hi pei, the cedars, and many other plants on our journey. So hoichoch, welcome, Anwanoxton Squalowin. Oh, check this out, Margo. Check out the beautiful little forest ferns coming up. Little fiddleheads popping out of the out of the foliage there. The beautiful moss carpet. People always say, how can I do this in my yard? Well, you have to attract it. You have to give it the environment that you see in the forest. You have to recreate it. So we see like ferns and um, thimbleberries and skunk cabbage, the little skunk cabbage popping up to say hi. Um, so I don't know if you knew this, but if you take one of the cups of the flower and you hold water in it for 15 minutes, it purifies the water. Wow. So if you're ever, you know, in a place where you have no water and you come across a marsh and water isn't so palatable, you can still scoop it up and let it sit for 15 minutes and it cleanses it. Fantastic. Yeah, it's just amazing. Skunk cabbage is like the, it's often people think of it, oh, it's a pretty flower, but it always smells funny, but, but you know, the, the leaves, they get so large and we've used them for centuries to lay out uh, either to dry our berries to make berry cakes, or we, um, we line our pits, uh, uh, the, when you do pit cooking, you put them down on the, on the rocks that have been heated up by the fire, and then you put your food in there, your salmon, your halibut, your clams and 
whatever sea, whatever things you've gathered from the sea or even deer and other meats and then you line them with the skunk cabbage and then bury them and let them cook overnight and oh so they you know they won't it's the safe method but they're also so massive that you you don't have to take a lot of them to to do a good pit cooking right mm -hmm. West Coast Luau. West Coast Luau, <laughs> totally. Yeah, we're, we're really blessed coming out at this time of year to wander in the forest and look at some of these plants. Like when you look in a forest, when if you're trying to grow salau in your yard, they might get this high, but look at these salals are about our height. They're about four, four and a half to six feet high in some places and mm. and like they're perennials, they're shrubs, so they come back every year and they don't uh, die off. They just keep filling the forest with this nice foliage. And of course, the beautiful salmon berry. I really hope today that when we're walking, we the salmon berry is the one with the fuchsia flowers on it. So, so yeah, so the salmon berry is one of my favorites at this time of year. We're actually uh, gonna start seeing the actual berries pop up and uh, right now we get to see the little fuchsia salmon berry flowers and uh, I, I just get overjoyed when I see hummingbirds coming up to pollinate them. They're really quite pretty and they're just so seeming like you hear their little wings and you hear their little sounds and then the next thing they're flickering around in the in the salmon berry blooms and um, I I've never eaten them, but children I know have told me, oh, I love salmon berry flowers. I'm like, don't eat them. Save them for the pollinators because <laughs> we all want berries. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good medicine. You know, the, the berries are really good, of course, for our blood. But the leaves are good for our tummy and our sore muscles. When you're hurting after a long walk in the forest, you can eat those. Oh. And now I'm noticing something very magical. This, this stuff excites the heck out of me. So these are uh, horsetail. And horsetail grow all over the world. You can see they're all along here. And they're, they're actually the oldest plant on the planet. They were the first green leafy plant to appear. So my favorite thing to tell children is this is dinosaur food. So imagine thousands of years ago, when millions of years ago, when there were just dinosaurs, this is what they ate. Like even the carnivorous dinosaurs ate leafy things and these were the things they ate. And they are really, um, at this time of year, they're all just starting to pop up and over the next month, it's the best time to gather horsetail. And if you get them with the little heads on them, like these ones, and you lay them down to dry and shake them, you'll see green powder. And the green powder is silica, and it's what, uh, what helps the medicine in the horsetail to absorb into your bones to strengthen them. And it also makes your hair strong and your teeth and your nails. So it's like a very exciting plant to me when I see it. I'm like, yay, the horsetails are coming up. And they look like horse's tail when they're really long and they're drying. They, they have, uh, these little spindly parts that go off. And that's actually what's really easy to process them when they're dry, you just kind of crunch them and they break into little pieces and then you can mix them in a tea. You can also put them in a jar with apple cider vinegar and shake them up. And uh, after a couple of weeks, you can rinse them in your scalp and your hair and it'll make your hair strong and it, it uh, prevents dandruff and stuff. So it's actually a really good thing to do. Give your scalp a, good wake up. It's a bit strong, so, you know, stand in the shower and rinse off. <laughs> but, uh, but it's really good for your scalp and it's really good for your hair. And, and of course, drinking uh, small amounts of it is good. We only uh, drink what we pick in the cold part of the season because when it gets super hot, it changes the chemical balance of it. But uh, positive thing again, apple cider vinegar, if you soak it in that, you, you uh, not only can you use it on your hair, but you can also take it uh, in your tea or you can drink it um, mixed with water because the apple cider vinegar neutralizes the oxalic acid in it and makes it uh, less unsafe. But by itself in the heat, it's not good to pick it. 
Um, when yeah. is it good to pick? How, how big do these mm -hmm. need to? I guess when they get about this tall, because then you get the, the full power of the plant. So when it gets about this tall, but these can all get about this high. <laughs> so when they're about this high, it's gonna be summer and you don't really wanna pick them unless that's all you have. And then you wanna soak it in apple cider vinegar for a couple of weeks. That way it keeps it from uh, damaging your organs and such. But yeah, it's, it's one of those plants that you'll find varieties of it all over the world. I've seen images of it from different parts of the world. And at first, when I look at it, I'm like, that kind of looks like horsetail. I look it up, oh yeah, it is. <laughs> but um, it grows everywhere. And um, yeah, I like telling kids it's dinosaur food. <laughs> they always react in a fun way to that. Yeah. I feel like, feel like it's been so long since we got to visit. And I love that we're out today in the forest together and getting to say good morning to the forest in the early spring when everything's starting to pop up gently and wake up. And up on that cedar tree, as well as the salal, is some beautiful huckleberries. And I know we're gonna see more huckleberries soon. Yeah, there's sculptures in this park, hidden, mm -hmm. hidden in beautiful ways. It's like everything is living and dying all together in this beautiful harmony and it and the birds are just layering it with sounds of their little songs they, they got quiet when i did <laughs> well speaking of listening here's some little ears on this tree so some fungus, like these shelf fungus, they often look like ears. <laughs> and I was taught by an elder that if you ever want to know what people are saying, you put, you take one of these and you put them on your windowsill. But be prepared because you'll hear everything. <laughs> but they are cute little ears and I always think they're listening. They're listening to everything for the forest as they're growing and they're helping uh, to decay. They're helping the decaying process of these dying and dead entities, the logs, trees that are dying, they start to form on them and they start to help them break down. And yeah, it's almost like death doulas, <laughs> living death doulas that are helping things, you know, go back to the earth and decompose. And so it's a very beautiful thing. All the textures and magic. We are taught to be afraid of so much, but there's so much in the forest to celebrate and to love and to cherish and, and to be not afraid of. <laughs> this el these elders I was interviewing one time, we were talking about sounds and stuff and they said, children used to be our radio. And I was like, what? And they're like, you know, they'd be outside playing and giggling and making up stories and we'd have our windows open and listening. The parents and elders would be listening to the children outside playing and it was like a radio because you never knew what was going to come on next, right? And I was like, yeah, that's really cool to think of it that way, how children are like our radios, you know, and, and when I, you know, in this time of Zooming and stuff, there are times when I'm talking to people and I can hear their children in the background and, and I'm like, yep, they really are little radios. <laughs> they're little radio hosts and they're, they're telling their own stories and they're having adventures and, and they're bringing things to life. And yeah, it's just so beautiful. Yeah, so these over here are deer fern. See how they're nice and... Nice. They, some of them lay down, but when we look at the back, you see they have a red spine. Mm -hmm. As they go further on, it gets, as the season goes, they get redder. They actually, in their young, younger part of their growth, they stand up. So they, the fiddleheads will come out soon from these. And they're so delicious. They're my favorite. <laughs> they're very tiny. And so you have to really look to find them. You're not going to see them now. It's too early, but in... In about a month, you'll start to see little red curls in the base there, and then they'll start to unfurl and they'll go straight up. And then later in the season, we can pick them when they're in this state, 
and they become like a weaving material. Ah. Isn't that great? Yeah. And they're almost all dried and ready for us. So it's, uh, it's one of those amazing plants and you can see the nice mm -hmm. pile of them. They like it here in the partial sun, partial shade. They have some, some little shrubs around them. They have some cedars and, uh, and hemlocks. And so all the nutrients from all of these plants are also, every time it rains, it's going down into them. And, and of course the moss mm -hmm. and it likes, seems to like this little embankment. I often find them near little tiny streams like this, little, just little tiny streams, they'll just flourish. So I think because their roots get in there and stay wet and then when they have the advantage of the mosses all around them, it just helps them to stay lush and you can see they're doing really good. So I've now found another source to go looking for weaving materials later this year because even the ones back here that are, I'll see if I can poke in there very gently always very careful how I walk in the forest because there are all kinds of things living under the mosses. So yeah, let's see. So this would be a really wonderful strip to use for weaving because it's black. So it's a different color and you'll, you'll really notice it in your weave. It's like, it is red, but when it dries, it probably goes a bit more black. And then you just keep smoothing everything out until you have this nice perfect piece and then you just let it dry and with any weaving materials you soak it before you use it so you don't break it and then when it dries again it dries in a nice it dries onto your weaving and holds it and because it's it's quite strong like I'm pulling on it quite tight and it's it's still after you know, it's been sitting here all winter, just dead. It still has so much strength and, and purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was talking about weaving last week with uh, some folks and, I was, and we were presenting for some teenagers in high school. And I was saying, you know, when my grandmother, who was a great basket weaver, when she was growing up, if she needed a container, she had to make it. <laughs> she couldn't go anywhere and buy it. <laughs> she had to actually go out and gather everything and build the container to do the next thing she had to do. And it's something that I think a lot of people, not just young people, but a lot of people these days forget. You know, oh, we just jump in our vehicle or we walk down the street to a store and we buy something. But if we, you know, if we were in a position where we had to, we had no access to any of those things, we'd have to go back to the earth and we'd have to gather things. We'd have to make it from scratch. And I think that there's like so much power in that, even to imagine the process, because, you know, today we can research it and look at it, but the power of thinking about our ancestors that were on the land, developing the tools and developing uh, the, the items, the containers, they were building all that. And we, you know, our, our, uh, generations, all of us right now, we can still reflect on that and still learn from it and grow and, and I don't know, just it's beautiful to be able to think about that and especially as Indigenous people that we can really consider the work that our ancestors did and how we transfer it into what we do now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like as long as I've known you we've all talked about those things these are the discussions we've had like how was it before this was an idea that we had to develop things to to make them happen right mm -hmm. yeah well I love fiddlehead so I'm going to be watching yeah you will <laughs> now you know where a good patch of deer fern fiddleheads are <laughs> yeah. oh this is pretty get to see Look at this massive hemlock. You don't ever see hemlocks get this big. Wow. This is a really big one. Huge, again, like look at the root, how it's running out and it's seeking. You can see in this little pathway how they're, all the roots are looking for one another, looking for other trees to talk to. And they actually heal each other. And this nice little young huckleberry just oh. growing right here. 
Do you want to touch the branches? There, it has a unique set of ridges. Yeah. yeah, it's really tactile. I always make people touch them because mm -hmm. they're different from the other yes. types of like blueberries and stuff. They have their own unique ridges and oh, they're just so pretty. <laughs> and a new baby cedar mm -hmm. coming up. Then we see this old dead cedar here. It's actually pretty high, isn't it? Wow. Look at that. Even again, even in its death, it's still, it's so, it's so strong, yet it's a soft wood, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have a little baby hemlock and some, you notice how the, the huckleberry over there has no leaves, but this one is getting leaves? Mm -hmm because that one it hasn't gotten enough sun yet. But that means that that one will get its berries later. So you could be eating here and then coming back later for that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the advantage. <laughs> the forest does take care of us and, and it provides us through every season with the foods and medicines we need. Oh, just love how many huckleberries are in this forest. Should we give this tree a big hug? Yeah. Let's give this tree a big hug. Even though it's a dead one, it's still, it's still got a lot of life in it. There's a little flower over here. Is there? There's a little lichen oh. with some little flowers. Oh yeah, these ones are so cool. I love that little red, the little red tops. Oh yeah, you see that's, the lichens are the air filters of the forest. They help to, like we know that plants provide oxygen, but lichens and fungi, other fungi, they're all part of the fungi family. They actually make the air clean. They purify it so that when you're breathing, you're breathing the cleanest, the cleanest air possible. Oh, so again, even our dead standing trees are all providing beautiful nutrients for us to stay alive. It's so wonderful how the forest changes temperature as you walk through it, huh? Yeah. And you get to feel the different degrees of the, of the air and, and what, what forests really do for us. They provide a cooling atmosphere and they keep us they keep us uh, calm, like we were talking about that. You were yeah. saying it's good to see people walking around in the forest and enjoying it. But it's also really good to be able to be out here and, and you know, we're in a few spots. We're like, ooh, it's really warm. And then we get to another spot, ooh, it's chilly. <laughs> Super nice. Good medicine. Really good medicine. I just see somebody coming through. I'm going to pop in here for a sec. Yeah, and again, the forest is a good example. Like in our yards, we rake the leaves and stuff and we think that's helping it. But then you look at the forest and it's all covered in everything that's fallen off the trees all winter and from the rains and the wind. And then at this time of year, it becomes a blanket for it. and. It's like nutrients, like a vitamin, mineral supplement. So it's always good to let your forest, or learn from the forest about your land and let your leaves fall down on the grass. They'll decompose and then you'll have better, better soil to grow things with. Mm -hmm. we, should, we should acknowledge this cedar because it's one of the, I mean, it's still it. a baby, but look at it. It's like, Just... it's about 500 years old. And there's not too many 500 year old cedars left in this park because they were all logged out of here. And I just love how it's loaded with salal and huckleberry. See how it's just, the huckleberries are growing right out of the tree itself. And it's just loaded. Oh, more of the... Lettuce? Yeah, more of the miner's lettuce. This is a really remarkable tree. 
and just how it twists. Yes. It's just, it's like it's dancing yeah. right here. And it's quite a magical tree. So I just really wanted us to acknowledge this beautiful cedar and take a moment with it. I'm gonna cuddle in here for a sec. Yeah. <laughs> it's the best thing for your sore back. <laughs> just lean against a good cedar once in a while. I just love how this whole thing twists around. Oh, it's it's like it's spiraling. dancing into the sky, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah. just, it's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, grandmother, for existing. It was probably about 300 years old when they were logging the park. And it was one that was left, because there's not too many. And then, then I look over here and I see all the little mushrooms uh, digging their way into this dead uh, fir tree. And you can still see some other seeds have dropped in there. There's some hemlock tree uh, starts that are going all the way up this, this fir tree. It's actually a fir tree, but it's got seeds that have dropped in it from other trees and it's growing all the way up and then it has huckleberries on top, on top. <laughs> it's so great they're all like up there <laughs> only the birds are going to get to eat those <laughs> nobody should ever climb that it's not safe <laughs> <laughs> so this has to be a fallen maple tree in here because we have licorice fern oh right licorice fern just to show and expose the, the root system. And then I'll take, I'll take one out to show you all. Usually they're up really high in the maple trees. That's why I'm so excited because I can pull this out and I can even put it back. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna take out a little bit, just enough to show you guys the beautiful licorice fern. Yeah, I'm gonna let you hold on to one. So yeah, so when we're, when we're gathering this to eat, we'll take all these little rootlet pieces off and then I put them back into there and I pat them down. So I'm basically propagating them when I do that. I'm making sure that more of the licorice root will grow. I'm taking all the tiny little rootlets off and I'm going to switch it with you. Okay. And I'll take these rootlets off of here. So you can see, you can see the rootlets are quite long, right? So now I'm going to take those off. The Latin name of this is polypodium, meaning many feet. <laughs> and I always giggle because when Sonocolo was little, she had this toy caterpillar with like about 20 feet on it and little runners. <laughs> and she called it many foot. <laughs> and so I can't help but think about it every time I think about polypodium because it means many feet. <laughs> yeah. There we go. And so you can see that ry the rhizome, it's a rhizome and it follows, it likes to grow on the, uh, on the bark of um, map the large, the big leaf maple. And it also likes to grow in mosses on the forest floor if there's enough, but it's real happy places with maples. And then, you know, we'll keep it on there so we can do a bit more close ups but it has like a greenish color underneath and a little bit black. And this medicine is one of the best um, that works uh, very happily and lives in all over the Pacific Northwest coast is one that we've used for centuries as a winter food and also as a medicine for respiratory ailments. So it helps uh, it with everything in your respiratory system, it also helps with acid reflux, so you can even just take a little bite and chew on it and you'll get rid of heartburn in like 10 minutes. <laughs> it starts to go away right away but it actually perfectly heals it and it goes into your stomach and it it will coat your stomach so that you don't um, have upset stomach. 
Yeah, and it's just one of the most magical things in the forest is licorice fern. It has really beautiful leaves, but you know, when you look, you have to look twice because they don't normally grow on the ground. That's why I had, was like, wait a minute, what's in there? Because I see sword ferns. And then I see, oh, there's another sword fern. And there could be some deer fern. And then I'm like, what is this? It's slightly different. It's, its fronds have a slightly different pattern when you look at them together. Yeah, we can, I'll put them like that so you can see can see the difference and this is cool because these little sword fern front, uh, fiddleheads down here aren't getting much sun so they're white so they're actually not getting they should be green and brown but because there's no sunlight hitting there they're actually white which is kind of cool yeah just some cool forest knowledge to hang out and learn oh yeah and there is a little deer fern behind me just popping up right down in here. <laughs> it's just having a little hiding spot right in the... And that's what they mean when they say the forest, seeing the forest through the trees, because there's greens and browns and so many colors you have to look at to see what's really out here. Would you guys like to try some licorice fern? <laughs> We can all eat it. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, so right now. Someone, someone on camera, eat it, and then. So we'll we'll now demonstrate. Yeah, it can it can make your it makes you salivate. Mmm. So if people want to know how did we spend six to eight months indoors with each other, singing all the time, telling stories, twenty hours a day. Licorice fern. <laughs> because you can just, you'll notice in about an hour if you take a swig of water, it'll reactivate. You'll be like, what? Very nice, eh? Nice. It's like a walnut combined with licorice. Okay. So I wanted to show you these um, little salmon berries. They're baby salmon berries. And most people say salmon berry shoots. And how the Skomish people say it is, you're going to love this. I have to get all the little fibers out of my mouth for a sec. <laughs> so I don't say it wrong. Zoom in on your mouth. ask e So t ask e I'll say it one more time with you. t ask e But the easy way is Sasky. <laughs> so, so I'm going to pick a nice little shoot down here. And I'm just going to pull it off of there. It's still alive. And then I'll show you, we just take the skin and start to peel it off. And see that? So speaking of things to eat in the forest, this is a good way of maintaining your salmon berry bushes when they're getting out of control. Means you just eat all their shoots. And you basically peel off, off all of those thorny parts. And there you go. You have a nice, beautiful, yeah. How's that? Wow. So I also wanted to show, when you're looking at salmon berries, so all they're related to blackberries so blackberries raspberries salmon berries thimble berries are all related about black caps red caps so when you look you have well some people say the uterine muscle and the fallopian tubes right but with this one especially which animal do you see butterfly. a little butterfly a little kelela and that's how I help children remember, is that I'm like, look at the little butterfly wings. So there we go. Yeah. Who else would like a ask e? We didn't actually really, we talked a little bit about huckleberry, but I wanted to, I wanted to uh, like make sure that we talked about the fact that huckleberries take literally centuries to get large. 
And so this one is growing out of a dead cedar and there's a little baby huckleberry next to it. The, the small huckleberry next to it there is about 15 or 20 years old. Really? Yeah. And so this one here is about 75 to 100 years old. My it, takes, it takes a century for the huckleberry bush to get to our height. Yeah. Oh. So there are literally, there are huckleberry bushes in this park. That are some, some of them are 500 years old and maybe even older. And so what I love is thinking about how uh, these, these plants connect my people to our ancestors mm -hmm. in that our families were, were living in this park a century ago and beyond and they were gathering these berries every year and that, our, that now our generations can be gathering from the same huckleberry bushes that our ancestors did. Mm -hmm. And that can go on for centuries. So that's why they're very delicate. They like the semi-shade. They really love cedar trees. They like hemlocks as well. And they'll often grow right out of the stumps of, of dead ones, but they'll also grow out of the living uh, cedar trees like we saw in that old one. And so huckleberries, uh, the, the berries themselves, the juice is like our blood, so it fills our blood, it's full of iron. And the tiny little microscopic seeds clean our intestines out. So they can actually prevent, um, you can prevent colon cancer and all kinds of things just eating huckleberries. And, uh, and then the leaves, you can make a tea with the leaves that lowers your blood sugar level. And the family, the, the Latin name for these plants, uh, for huckleberries and blueberries, and cranberries is vaccinium. What does that word sound like to you? Vaccine. Yeah, so eating these prevents illnesses. Wow. And that's how they do is the, the, the seeds and the blood, the blood red rich juice. Yeah, so we have to protect our huckleberries because they're here to protect us. Yeah. <laughs> right on! Oh, that's a perfect out. Ani nah.